Well, good morning on this Easter Sunday morning in 2024. Uh, from Australia, of course, some of you people are still asleep, but we are awake. And we're looking at today, continuing on with the epistle to the Hebrews. And we look at chapter 9 today. The title of this chapter is... Christ is mediator of the new covenant. Now, after Paul tells the Hebrew believers that the Levitical priesthood has been abolished and that the new covenant has come in chapter 8 of Hebrews, he then tells them that the old covenant is ready to vanish away. He is telling them that you cannot have two covenants operating at the same time. You can't have two testaments operating in the same time. Because a covenant is a testament. So in this chapter, Paul starts to explain the new covenant in more detail. So that they can be obedient to the promises of the new covenant, which can save them from their sins forever. But first, he must remind them of the old tabernacle and its fa facilities and its functions. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service, and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made the first, wherein as the candlesticks and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant, overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had the manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the two tablets of the covenant, making up the Ten Commandments. And over it, cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. But Paul said this is just revision. So you already know all of these things, and some of you are priests, and have actually performed the functions in the sanctuary. Now then, when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. This signified the first covenant. But into the second covenant went the high priest alone every year. Not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors, the sins of the people. Even though he had been ordained as the high priest under the old covenant, it was not enough to allow him to enter beyond the second veil into the Holy of Holies, without bringing the blood to be offered upon the mercy seat, firstly for his own sins, and then for the sins of the whole nation. His action was not everlasting. They only were valid for one year. Verse 8, the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. While ever the temporary tabernacle remained in existence, the eternal promises of the new covenant could not become activated. Again, I remind you, you can't have two, op tab uh, two covenants operating at the same time. The same as you can't hell, have two wills operating at the same time. That's why it says it's the last will and testament which we figure for a time what then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. This is verse 9. That could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Here Paul points out the dilemma of the Old Testament covenant. Even though they followed it to the letter, it did not make the participants perfect in their conscience. The Living Bible says it this way. This is a very important lesson for us to learn today. For under the old system, gifts and sacrifice were offered, but these failed to cleanse the hearts of the people who brought them, nor the priests who offered them. Verse 10, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers, various washings and carnal ordinances, imposed on them until the time of reformation. These offerings and rituals were carnal in nature. They were not spiritual, which were opposed, imposed upon them, not through freedom of choice into the spiritual realm, but by obligation. 
until Christ came with God's new and better way. Now you start to see it. When Christ came, it was a better way. The old has passed away. All becomes new. <coughs> that includes us and includes the Old and New Testaments as well. Verse 11 is a promise. But Christ being come as high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. But Jesus came as a high priest representing the good things to come through a purer, greater perfect tabernacle, which is eternal. Not like this building that Paul and the believers was occupying while he taught them these words. Paul had been telling them that this building will eventually collapse and fall down. But the building that Jesus represents in heaven is eternal and will never collapse or fall down. Verse 12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. While Je when Jesus entered into the holy place as the eternal high priest with the rank of Melchizedek, he did not enter with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own shed blood that he placed once forever on the mercy seat in the heavenly tabernacle having by his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection obtained eternal salvation for all who call upon his name. <clears throat> Conditional promise. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, then how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. If the, bull, the blood of bulls and goats under the old system could sanctify the purification of the flesh for one year, then just think how much more can the blood of Christ, who offered up his sinless blood for all of us, do for us in the heavenly kingdom. As written in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, Therefore, let us purge ourselves from dead works. They are not going to achieve any eternal benefit. And let us change our direction and serve our living God, Jesus Christ, while we are here on this earth. Verse 15, a promise. For, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Christ is a mediator of the new covenant, which made the old covenant obsolete. I'll say that again. He is the mediator of the new covenant, which made the old covenant obsolete, that by means of his death on the cross and his resurrection, he will give an eternal inheritance to all that are called by his name and found worthy on the day of their presence before Christ's judgment throne. Verse 16, For where a testament is, there may also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator lives. For we know that the last will and testament has no legal value while a person who made that will is still alive. It only becomes legal and comes into force after the person has died. The same applies here to Christ. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all of the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkle both the book and all of the people. At the cross, all of these same elements were in operation. 1. Instead of blood of animals, Christ's own blood was shed. 2. When the soldier gored Christ with a spear, blood and water run out. 3. When Jesus cried out that he was thirsty, they wrapped wool and hyssop in, onto a spear, and dipped it in vinegar, and wet his lips with it. 4. 
Jesus himself went up into heaven and sprinkled his own blood on the mercy seat. Not the blood of goats and calves, but his own blood. And this activated his testament before the Father, the new covenant written and prophesied in Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34, over 600 years before Christ was born. Five, this was also the trigger for the end time prophecies of Daniel and other prophets to start being put in motion. Six, the first thing or seven, the first one being the first Pentecost after his ascension, where the 120 people in the upper room were waiting for the promised Holy Ghost to come down upon all of those who were gathered. Eight, this was followed by the conversion of over 3,000 Jews by the Holy Spirit's anointed message spoken by Peter, and the beginning of the evangelism, which is recorded in the book of Acts, followed by persecution, and finally the destruction of the temple in 70 AD and the diaspora of the Jews. 9. Then the next major event occurred on the 14th of May 1948 when another process, prophecy was fulfilled and the nation of, was reborn in one day. And so the testament of Christ, the Son of God, continues. Verse 20 saying, This is the blood of the testament which God has enjoined unto me. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And most all things are by law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant of the law, there could not be any remission of sins except for one year unless the high priest sprinkled blood on the mercy seat. If he didn't go into that Holy of Holies every year, the sins of the nation were not forgiven. But it was only every year. Verse 23 is a conclusion. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves were better with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in it hits heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. The resurrected Christ entered into heaven itself to appear once again before the Father, his Father, confirming his words on the cross. It is finished. He came into the throne room of heaven as our advocate. It was not into the replica tabernacle on earth that he did this, but the eternal tabernacle in heaven. Verse 25. Not yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the Holy of Holies, in the replica tabernacle every year with blood of others. For well, then must he often have suffer, suffered since the foundation of the world, but now, once in the end of the world, has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. If there was not a new covenant, then Christ would have had to die again and again, every, ever since the world began, suffering that agony every year. But no, he came once for all time, at the end of the age, to put away the power of sin forever, by dying for us, both Jews and Gentiles, who believe upon his name. Verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time, without sin unto salvation. For the, unto those who are diligently seeking him, Jesus will appear a second time, without sin, to save them forever. <clears throat> and something for you to think about before we move on to chapter 10. Verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment, seeing 
Lazarus died twice. Is he going to be judged twice? Think about that one. 